When we live primarily in the headspace, in the analytical thinking mind, this is going to lead to overthinking. And overthinking leads to a lot of unnecessary suffering in our lives. And this can manifest in the form of anxiety, fear, doubt, insecurity, and many other negative emotions, anger, jealousy, pride, all these different things. And so what we have to understand is the headspace, the analytical thinking mind is useful and necessary at times while we're here on this earth, but we are not supposed to be living from the headspace all of the time. And if we do this, if we are in our heads, if we are living from the analytical thinking mind, the egoic mind, the majority of the time, like I just said, we're going to experience a tremendous amount of unnecessary suffering that is all occurring in the mind. And most of the time, what we're worrying about, what we're anxious about, what we're fearful of never ends up coming to pass. And so this is where the unnecessary suffering that we bring on to ourselves comes from. Now, the solution, the answer to this is to shift from the headspace into the heart space because we are actually supposed to be living primarily from the heart space, from the heart center. And then we use the mind when we need to use the mind, but we don't stay there. We don't stay in the head space. We return home back to the heart. And so in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how to shift from the head space into the heart space and then how to live from this place of being in the heart, how to open your heart chakra. And I'm going to be talking about how music has been such an essential tool for me to make that shift from the headspace into the heart space, and then how to really allow my heart chakra to be open, how to allow the energy to flow. And from this, there can actually be uh, tremendous amounts of healing and nervous system recalibration and your vibrational frequency will raise. And this is also, this can be an opportunity to experience um, the divine within yourself. And it's, it's, through, it's through the heart that we experience the divine and, and oneness with God. And this is also the place where intuition and creativity, and we can enter into a flow state pretty easily from the heart. And it's also where mystical experiences happen. And, and so I know for myself, when I started using music as a tool to shift from my headspace to my heart space, what happened was I was actually using the music for some inner work, for some shadow work. And so there were some, and so I actually made a video not too long ago about how um, I was listening to Luciano Pavarotti and I was doing some inner work and this led to me having an incredible mystical experience. So if you haven't seen that video already, please go back and watch that video after you watch, after you finish watch this video, after you finish watching this video. Anyways, so I'm listening to music, doing some inner work and uh, this was a few years ago. This is when I started doing this. And what I noticed was that as I was listening to music, there would be certain emotions, certain feelings that I had repressed within myself that started to arise. And when they would arise, I had the option in that moment to accept it and to feel it and to let it run its course. Because here's the thing, all these like different emotions that we're repressing or suppressing their energy and energy is always flowing it's moving that's the natural tendency of energy to always be flowing and moving and so what happens is when we have these emotions which are energy everything is energy when we block the energy within us from flowing and from running its course what happens is there's a buildup, there's a blockage, and this is when the negative manifestation happens. This is when the anger comes about, the depression, the fear, the feeling of just being disconnected, the insecurity, the guilt, the shame. All these things typically stem from some kind of a blockage within the depths of our being, within our soul, within our chakras. And so this is why it's so important to do the inner work, to do the shadow work, to, to go within and discover, to discover those parts of us that have been repressed 
and pushed down and neglected. And what we do, the, the, the whole point of inner work is to bring the light of awareness, the light of consciousness into those places within us. And what happens is when we bring awareness, which is light, I think light has been used as a symbol for pure consciousness, pure awareness. We bring light into those repressed uh, emotions and that's when the healing happens. That's when the energy is able to flow, the blockage is removed, and we get in harmony, we get in balance, and our vibrational frequency rises, and the frequency is smooth, and like I said, there's harmony there. And so that's why it's so important. And so when we're listening to music, what can happen is the music can actually help us to feel certain emotions because music has a very interesting way of pulling up those old repressed emotions and feelings that have been buried for maybe months or years or decades or however long and music has a way of just opening the heart and music is something that i think is very spiritual and it's something that we don't talk enough about it from this perspective but music is vibrational and when we resonate with a certain song or a certain artist and when we listen to them and we know that hey there is something going on within us i can't really explain it but when this song comes on or when this person is singing or this band or this type of music when this is when i'm listening to this something within me vibrationally is resonating and i feel a peace i feel joy i start laughing i start crying when this is occurring, all these different emotions, all these different feelings, this is actually when your heart is starting to open. This is the beginning of the heart chakra opening up and that energy is starting to flow through your body and you're starting to feel uh, relief. You're starting to feel healing. You're starting to feel peace. Why? Because what you're doing in that moment, because of the music, the music is, is the tool, it's the method that's enabling you to feel those repressed emotions. But by feeling them, like I said, the light of the world, the light of pure consciousness is shining on those parts, on those repressed emotions, on the energy that has been blocked, and it's just releasing it. And from this, this is when you can have a pretty incredible mystical experience. I know many of my mystical experiences have come from me doing the inner work, doing shadow work, listening to music, where I move from my head space to my heart space. And then when I, once I'm in my heart space, I'm able to shine that light of pure awareness on the repressed emotions. And all of a sudden this release happens. I feel free. I feel the energy flow through my body. I feel the negative energy leave and it is uh, replaced with pure unconditional love and joy and gratitude and peace and compassion. And during this moment, when your heart is open, like I keep saying, this is when typically people have that experience of transcendence where their vibrational frequency raises and they enter into this state of consciousness where you know they they start to see themselves others and the world around them completely differently so really it's unity consciousness that's what it is it's the awareness the consciousness expands from being an egoic separate self to one with everything to one with god and the the simply opening the heart chakra is the gateway it's the door into this experience into reality now once we have an incredible experience like this where we shift from the headspace to the heart space we experience the heart chakra opening we experience all the blockages going away the energy starts to flow through us again we feel the grace we feel the love we feel the rhythm and the harmony of being in balance vibrationally and everything's just amazing. So once, once we experience this and then maybe we have a mystical experience from this heart opening, the question is, okay, well, how do we keep living from this space? How do we keep 
living from the heart center and not get caught up in the ego again or not get caught up in living primarily in the analytical thinking mind which leads to overthinking which leads to anxiety and fear and worry and depression and stress and all these other negative emotions how do we stay there how do we live from the heart and i think for me it's it comes down to um being consistent being diligent with spending time with yourself with meditation and and once you awaken to your true self as the pure awareness then what happens is you can actually sit back and observe when you can see yourself starting to shift back into the old egoic tendencies and then all you do is simply you, you return back to the present moment because here's the thing about the heart the heart is rooted and grounded in the present moment the analytical thinking mind is always distracted by thoughts about the past or the future and this is where a lot of the anxiety and, and fear and worry and shame come from but the heart doesn't know the past or the future the heart is just here now and so when you are sitting back as the uh, as the awareness as the witness as as the observer of your thoughts of your feelings of, of your emotions and you and you see yourself start to go back to the old ways all you do is simply return back to the present moment take some deep breaths maybe you chant a mantra whatever you need to do to cultivate that inner stillness and whatever you need to do to be absorbed in the now and the present moment you do that and so I, i've made a video i think this was the last video i made actually where i talked about how meditation is actually training for life and what i meant by that is you know for example when you're meditating one of the techniques is the primary object technique and the whole point of the primary object technique is to have one thing that you're focused on because when you're focused on one thing then all the other thoughts that are distracting that are trying to grab at you that are trying to get your attention start to kind of dissipate and they start to fade away and so this is a technique this is a practice that helps us still the mind and it helps us get into deeper meditative states it helps us slow the brain waves down and so in the same way when you're going about your day and stuff is happening situations are going on and circumstances are arising and you feel that pull to go back to the ego to go back to fear to go back to worry to go back to anxiety what you simply do is sit back observe be aware know that you have thoughts but you are not your thoughts you have feelings but you are not your feelings you have emotions but you are not your emotions you are what's aware you are pure consciousness and this is actually what i think you know when when jesus talks about the light of the world i think the light of the world that he's talking about and that we find in other ancient spiritual text is the pure consciousness that we are fundamentally beyond the body beyond the mind beyond time beyond space and beyond the ego it's pure awareness and so when jesus says i am the light of the world and then he tells his disciples i think in matthew 5 he tells them that that they are the light of the world what is he saying i think he's actually pointing to the essence of their true nature as pure consciousness as awareness beyond the body and beyond the mind and this is actually in the gospel of thomas jesus talks about this uh some more about about uh being the light and what that actually means and and it's really fascinating anyways where was i going with that or where where was i before that um i don't remember but anyways once we awaken to the true self as pure consciousness as pure awareness as the light of the world and we recognize that as the deepest truth of our being then we can sit back as that awareness and we can observe all of our thoughts all of our emotions all of our feelings everything we're experiencing and if we see ourselves start to drift back to the old back to the ego back to fear and shame in the old ways we simply return to the now to ultimate reality to the present moment and this is going to ground us in the heart space why because the heart center the heart space is fundamentally rooted and grounded in the eternal now the now is all the heart knows it's not in the past and it's not in the future so that's really the main thing that's that's the first step something else we can do 
is once we're in the heart space, once we start living there, once we start to be in the present moment, we're going to experience oneness with God, oneness with other, oneness with others. And what we're going to discover is that separation is an illusion. And we're going to start to see that that the divine in us is also in everyone and everything. And this is going to lead us, this is going to cause us to want to serve others. Just like if we look at the life of Jesus, right? What does he say? Love your neighbor as yourself. He didn't say love your neighbor like you loved yourself. He said love your neighbor as yourself. The way I interpret that is love your neighbor, which your neighbor is anyone, with the recognition that you are not separate from your neighbor. You are actually one with your neighbor. And Jesus also says Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And so once we get this, once we see it, once we experience it, and we we discover that separation is an illusion, we're one with, with everything, we're one with everyone, then this is going to cause compassion to start to arise from within our hearts. And what we'll notice is that the more we serve, the more we give, the more we we take our attention and focus off of ourselves and on to others, This is going to cause us not only to remain in the the heart center, but it's going to expand the energy in our heart chakra even more. And so, yeah, this expansion of energy, this expansion of consciousness is going to lead us to fall in love with life even more. And the divine in us is going to radiate uh, in high levels and people are going to start to see it coming from within us, that light of the world that is the essence of our true nature, our true being, is going to shine like never before. And the whole point of this is, the whole whole reason for this is simply because we are shifting our awareness beyond ourselves. And we are recognizing through unity consciousness that all is one. Everything is interconnected. What we are doing to others, we are doing to ourselves. And so that is going to cause us to want to treat our neighbor, the world around us, with love, with respect, with honor, with kindness, with compassion. And the more we continue to serve others and focus less on ourselves and more on those around us, we are going to feel that energy increase and the heart is going to keep opening and opening and opening. And the energy is going to keep flowing and it's going to feel so amazing. It's going to feel like this is our design. We weren't designed for ourselves. We were designed for others. Why? Because the separate self, the ego, is an illusion. And so, again, this is going to create so much inner peace, so much clarity, so much freedom, so much grace, so much harmony in our lives simply because we are moving from the headspace, which is always centered on time and the past and the future and the ego to the heart space which is open it's beyond time it's always grounded in the eternal now in the present moment and it's beyond space so it's beyond the separate self it's beyond the illusion of the ego it sees all as one it sees from unity consciousness and this creates a lifestyle of compassion and kindness and service to others So this is one of the main things that I think will help us stay in the heart space and it will continue to allow the energy to flow in the heart space, through the heart space, and then beyond ourselves. And, you know, the heart really is incredible when you start to study it because the heart can actually think. It's intuitive and there's an electromagnetic field that is coming from it that is expanding beyond the physical body and so when we're living from this place and the heart is open that that field of energy is going to keep expanding and again there's going to be this uh this vibrational frequency that people around us start to feel as soon as as soon as we get into their presence they're going to notice it and and then the other side to it is as your field as this electromagnetic field is increasing and the energy is expanding, you're going to start to become more intuitive. So you're going to start to feel other people's energy more. And this is going to give you more intuition, more guidance, more understanding. You're going to make better decisions. And you're going to make these decisions based upon feel and less upon what the thinking mind is telling you. Because the thinking mind sometimes gets it right. 
but most of the time it's overthinking and so it's overanalyzing and this is causing fear and anxiety to arise and then we end up making these decisions from this place of not really understanding in this place of uncertainty in this place of fear and that turns out being the wrong decision and so if we're living from the heart space the heart's open energy's flowing and we're cultivating peace and love for others we're seeing beyond the separate self this is when the intuition starts to arise and the intuition is clarity it's heart knowledge it's divine knowledge divine wisdom whatever you want to call it and this knowledge is it's what the mystics call experiential knowledge and so it's not so much it's not intellectual knowledge it's not headspace knowledge it's heart knowledge and it's much more of a feel than something that you're thinking like a thought and so this is something that i think uh, really all of us have experienced whether we were aware of it or not and so it's a deep impression you feel it in, you feel it in your body and a lot of times what happens is you know you'll you'll say something like i just had a weird feeling this wasn't going to work out or i had a weird feeling i had this strong impression that that was the wrong decision or that that was going to happen or that was not going to happen and so this is something again this is a feeling an impression that is very strong that is something that is in the body the body is feeling it and it's not so much just this thought that just comes and goes it's something that has a tendency to stay with us some people call it a gut feeling um, but this is going to start becoming more clear we're going to start having this more often and the more we start to align ourselves with the intuitive heart and we start to become aware of what it feels like to feel other people's energy to feel the energy of certain circumstances and situations you know this is also very helpful if you've got a big decision to make and you know maybe it's something with business or maybe it's you're looking to you know purchase a new home or a car or maybe it's with a relationship you're trying to decide if you're going to marry someone you know this is when you want to be living in the heart space because the heart is going to lead you in the direction that you need to go and there's going to be clarity and then once you make that decision from the intuitiveness of your heart there's going to be confirmation that comes in the form of peace and this peace is a peace that surpasses all understanding so it's a peace that surpasses the analytical thinking mind because it's not coming from the mind it's coming from the heart and it's the heart's way of confirming that hey the decision that you just made based upon the intuitive knowledge that i am producing is the correct way it's the correct path it's going to lead to you experiencing some kind of success or some kind of healing or some kind of positive outcome that's what's going on and so this is why it's so important like i said to be rooted and grounded in the heart space and music for me has been the number one way to really open my heart space to open the heart chakra but the question is once it's open then what how do we continue to live from it and i just gave you a few ways and i i shared why it's important this is also where creativity starts to arise you know for people who are creating things whether it's art or music or maybe they're writing or making videos whatever it is um this is something that i've experienced as a content creator you know when i'm sitting there like trying to come up with stuff to make videos on or if i'm trying to come up with stuff to write about if i'm in my headspace if i'm thinking about it if i'm trying to process it through this analytical manner what happens is i end up sometimes i'll come up with some decent stuff but most of the time it's just it doesn't feel right it doesn't flow and then it doesn't uh produce like i expect it to produce but when i'm in my heart space whether i'm meditating or listening to music doing inner work or just going for a walk and and sinking into my heart space when i get to my heart space and i start to experience that that inner stillness that surpasses the mind from this place of stillness out of nowhere i'll get an idea 
I'll get a title for a video or a title for a book or you know a, a chapter or something that I'm supposed to write or create. It will just come out of nowhere. I won't have to think about it. I won't have to try to figure it out or, or really create it. It just it comes out of nowhere and it's coming from that stillness, from that silence of the heart. Why? because the heart is magical. This is where the divine is. This is where that energy is flowing. And when, when we are allowing that energy to flow, things will come to us. We won't have to go out and chase them. Those things that you've been wanting to experience, those things that you've been trying to create will come to you because you're gonna become more magnetic when you're living in your heart space. And so those things are gonna start being attracted to you. And they just, like I said, out of nowhere, they just appear, they just come out of the blue in the heart space, in that inner stillness, when you're not thinking. You see, we think that the more we think, the more ideas we're gonna get, the more creative we're gonna get, but that's not actually how it works. The creativity, all the things we're trying to come up with, the ideas, the thoughts, the opportunities, all of it comes from this dimension, from this realm of the heart space. It comes from the inner stillness. It comes from the silence. It comes from the opposite way we think it's going to come. And this is why it's so important to be grounded in the heart space. If we're trying to create, if we're trying to discover what our life's purpose is, why we're here, what we're supposed to be doing, and so much more. And so, look, I know I've said a lot today in this video about the heart, and maybe for some of you, this is brand new. Maybe this is challenging. Uh, but I just want to encourage you to really consider what I'm saying and maybe start viewing music from a different perspective where you see it as a tool, you see it as a method to open up your heart, to shift from your headspace to your heart space. And this is probably something that most of you can say that you've experienced before already in your lives where you're listening to music or a certain song or a particular singer or a band and it's just like when they sing that high note or when they play that beat or whatever it is, it's like something about that. When I'm listening to the music, when I'm absorbed in it, I start feeling all these different things. And that's the key. I start feeling and I'm thinking less. And then all of a sudden, these emotions start to arise and some are positive and some are negative, but I just let them do their thing. And it just feels all of a sudden like I'm being pulled into this, this piece. And then maybe I become joyful. Maybe I start laughing or maybe it touches my heart so much that I start crying. And then the more I cry, the more these negative feelings and emotions are released. And I feel this sense of relief. I see, I feel this, this sense of grace and harmony again and balance again, restoration. You know, all this happens through the method, through the modality of music. Meditation is a modality. Meditation is a method. And music is another method. It's another modality. It's just, it's another path. It's another method. It's another way of experiencing and discovering what we already have, the essence of our being, okay? Uh, but like I said, for me personally, when I'm doing inner work, when I'm doing shadow work, and I'm really trying to go within to feel those repressed emotions, this is when I will listen to music. This is when I will use this particular method. And so my encouragement to you is to give it a try, see if it helps, see if it works for you, and if it does, keep doing it. This is something that we should be practicing on a regular basis, maybe not every day, but often, and that's gonna be different for each person, so figure out how much of it is, is needed for you and for your journey, okay? So I think that's it for today's video. I would love to hear your stories. If this is something you, if, it, if this is something that you have been practicing and that, and that you've noticed uh, healing from and you've noticed uh, a change in your life, uh, I would love to hear about it. And if you feel like you're you know, stuck in the headspace and you can't make that shift from the headspace into the heart space, uh, please let me know as well. I'd love to help you. I'm also a spiritual coach, so I help people to make that shift. And uh, I would be happy to work with you if that's something that you're interested in. And I'll put more information for that in the description below. 
So if you found this video helpful, informative, or insightful, please leave a thumbs up at the bottom of the screen and be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.